I'm interrupting the party. Somebody having a party? <laughs> yeah. uh, and them old timers, they'll get settled down in a minute. <laughs> I'm really shocked, Ms. Ward said, you're up front. <laughs> All right. Glad to see everybody here with us. We pray that you get a blessing out of the service today and to get an uplifting. See, we get this, this 16 year old up here. That's right. Pushing. Are you, are you coming this way? Yeah, I'm up to see the I just went from the from the walker to a pusher. Uh -uh. That happened. That happened. That happened. Yeah. Got me a you you gonna shoot shoot that over there? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Yeah. Get your arm. Yeah, that's all right. All right. All right. <coughs> Open up your bulletins right quickly, and uh, we'll look at the uh, prayer list this morning. Uh, we want to remember the families of Janice Barker, Dwayne Jividen, and Tracy Kelly. Is that right? Did I pronounce that right? Tracy Kelly, uh, Clarence Kelly's sister, that passed away. So just remember them, all the other names that's in our bulletins, uh, the laws, the caregivers, our youth. Thank you. Uh, got some uh, praise reports in here this morning. Uh, Ethel Mae Gillum was baptized this past e uh, Monday evening here at the church. Uh, Clay and uh, Amber Lachey Shepherd's newborn uh, is off the ventilator, it says. Charlie Atkins got to go home this week. And uh, Bernie Patrick is improving, as is Michael Brewer. And uh, Brother Tom and Brother Tim uh, both expressed their thanks for all the prayers and are still needing prayers. So let's still remember all these names that's in there this morning. Uh, news and notes. Our family group will be going bowling this afternoon. Uh, at, we'll be, uh, have soup and sandwiches at 3 over there, and then after that, bowling from 4 to 6, and come out and support a youth where everybody's invited. And then we'll see if we can uh, beat Miss Wilma Jane today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about not now. I tell you what, Wilma Jean can bowl. Oh, okay. Sarah, she knows how. You might, you might so. look at a committee for Monday, Paul, to <laughs> go around and help these people around. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, volleyball tournament continues this Tuesday uh, at 6 o'clock. Uh, we need some uh, cheerleaders. So come out and help us. Um, also, volunteers are needed to assist with the senior outreach programs. We're still working on that. It's in progress. And uh, also, our VBS is uh, fast coming around in, in June. And we need some volunteers and teachers. And so we've got some. So uh, we'll see who else we can get to help teach and uh, to volunteer in our uh, VBS that's coming up. Also, April the 16th through Wednesday the 19th, our Gospel Revival, and with Brother Steve Brown from Tennessee, he'll be coming to uh, hold a revival here for those few nights, and uh, be much prayer for a revival. We pray that uh, souls will be saved and hearts will be strengthened. And uh, Brother Steve Brown used to be a pastor down at Glen Avenue Church, and uh, he does a great job in spreading God's Word. Good speaker. And he's a great speaker. Uh, also, uh, if you know anybody that's still needing uh, re uh, help with the flood relief, see Aunt Leanne and Patsy on that. Also, our family group, continue to, to remember hit our Christ Pantry with our saltine crackers and our school backpack program that we're supporting. And uh, also on the back of your bulletins, uh, we're still taking up uh, commodities for Potter's Children Home, and they'll be here uh, the week of eight, uh, March the 19th, and that's only a couple weeks away. But if you also want to uh, uh, do a monetary donation, there's some uh, envelopes in the back that you can put 
uh, your money in, and they'll pick that up also. Cans for change. Yeah, and uh, there, there's some cans back there for change also for that. Uh, and also, Brother Doc, you're going to have to get here pretty early Saturday for men's breakfast. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'll leave yeah, here early. Six, six o'clock. Oh, wow. Six. <laughs> that is early. <laughs> well, it's just a typo. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be worried I was going to have to spend the night. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to spend the night. There was a break, though. <laughs> <laughs> if you make a mistake here, it doesn't go on. <laughs> uh, I, told, I told Dan I'd make a little loop on that six to make an eight o'clock for him. So, <laughs> uh, eight o'clock men's breakfast, and the uh, deacons, elders, trustees at six, and business meeting at seven. So, well, no, we won't let Dan live that down for about a month. Yeah. So. Uh. Oh, Doc's got devotions. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said you were last week. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I got it. Okay. Yeah. Thanks about You'll have to get up at 6 o'clock to get that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, turn to page 408 in your songbook. Oh, come here, man. Yeah, I'm going to try to get these all. You've got a good high voice. Most people can't get. Uh, You're saying I got a high voice? you got a high voice. <laughs> and, uh, Damn. Damn this hold that long enough to let him get it in. Okay, I'm probably just coming a little bit. Go ahead. That's the reason I said that. Let me see. Let me get let me get the stool. I'll get the stool, pigeon. Okay. He's talking about prayer this morning. I sure wish you'd say a prayer for me. I'm getting pretty pretty staggery. Uh, so I don't know only how long I can continue, but I'm going to go. Uh, me and Sue was talking about the church and staying, you know, and, and leaving and all of this. And I said, they're going to pack me out there. And that's the truth. I'd be right here and pack it out. Uh, is Billy still here? He's in Florida. He's gone to Florida. Florida. How do you get there that quick? Well, <laughs> I thought I saw him. Oh, no. But seriously, this is a good place. It's a good people. God is present. And we do our best to stay in his word. We do our best. So if you'll turn to number 408, and we'll try to get it started. <laughs> Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the sky. Oh, they tell me of the land far away, where the tree of life wears a storm cloud dry. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, the land of the sky. 
We'll try to get this one in. Uh, we're going to sing about sunshine. There's sunshine in my soul today, more glorious and bright than glows in any earthly sky. For Jesus is my light. Oh, the sunshine, blessed sunshine, while the peaceful, happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. There is music in my soul today. A carol to the King, and Jesus listening can hear the song I cannot sing. Oh, the sunshine, blessed sunshine, while the peaceful, happy moments roll. just as good as, as the one because it's, whether we know it or not, we can help you if we know it, but God knows who it is and you know who it is and that's the important part. Anybody else? I guess you could probably take Eli off of the prayer list now. He's doing so well. It's just been wonderful. And uh, he goes and gets his braces pretty soon and then he'll be out of the wheelchair. He's been greatly blessed. Okay. It's great. You've got a wonderful place for where to walk, don't you? To walk. Uh, anybody else? Can we remember me? 
Who? Brenda. Oh, Brenda. Brenda's been a friend a long time. We go back a long way. But she needs her prayers right now, believe me. She needs her prayers. Anybody else? The service today. Remember the service today. Paul said that, and that's a good thing. Well, if you'll turn to number 600, uh, what? Oh, I forgot to turn my page. Routine. All right. I'm still thinking about getting up at 6 o'clock. So <laughs> Oh, 49, it's a good old prayer song we've sang it here for years. Uh, I think the older ones are the better. Might be wrong. Any more prayer requests? What'd you have? What'd you say, Sue? I didn't say anything. Jimmy, Michael's right at the brewery got to come home um, Thursday. So, I mean, for somebody that's been on a ventilator and nearly dead, Got to come home Thursday. All right, that's Michael. Mm, you got to come home Thursday. Great. Uh, if you if you put someone on a prayer list, uh, if they get well or they get better, you need to tell uh, Charlene, and that way she can pull the name off that bulletin, because we just keep building, building, building. But as long as they need your prayers, you need to leave it. But when they don't like the Leanne was telling us about the young man getting better and Sister Wilma Jean, she's getting better. And everybody's getting better. Anybody else? <coughs> Kneel at the cross. Christ will meet you there. He intercedes for you. Lift up your voice. Leave with him your care. And begin life anew. Kneel at the cross. Leave every care. coming back and we all uh, we know that God answers prayer he hears it and uh, we, we certainly want to keep our prayers going we're going to spend a few minutes now in prayer and ask brother Tom if he would come uh, lead prayer for us <coughs> let's bow our heads 
Our gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this, another Lord's Day, that we can come out and assemble together, dear Heavenly Father, in love and in spirit and in word. And we are so happy, dear Lord, today for those souls that have gathered here mm -hmm. uh, in the house. And we're happy for those that, dear Lord, is, uh, that have joined us virtually as well. The different prayer requests that are made, dear Lord, and we know that you search our hearts and we ask that you be with each of those petitions. And we know that there are so many people, dear Heavenly Father, listed in our bulletin. We have so many people that are going through treatments and different uh, things, dear Heavenly Father, medically. We just ask that you would be with them. Be with those that couldn't be here for whatever reason today. And we hope that their spirit is uplifted in some way. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, for the country we live in. We would hope that those that lead and guide us would look to you for direction. We would hope that we would still be a nation that looks to God. Be with the many people that protect us, the many uh, people that uh, have jobs, dear Lord, and capacities of uh, working with us and, and watching over us. And we just ask that you would be with them as they uh, go about their daily tasks. We pray today here for this service. We pray that you will be with Doc, dear Heavenly Father. We pray that you'll be with Paul, that you will anoint them with the words that you would have them to deliver to us. And be with each of us, dear Heavenly Fathers, in our minds and in our hearts, that we may receive this word. And dear Heavenly Father, that it would help us to grow closer to you and would help us to do the things mm -hmm. that you would have us to do. Again, we thank you for all the many prayers that you've answered, so many things. We ask things, and sometimes we go along and forget to say thank you. And we pray, dear Lord, to thank you for these things, and we pray to thank you for Jesus Christ, who came to this low ground, dear Heavenly Father, and suffered, one who had no gall in his mouth, one had no sin, but yet he took that upon himself so that we could have a passage and join you someday. And we just pray that if someone is here today that it doesn't know you, that you would call them and they would accept that calling and come forth, dear Heavenly Father, and become a child of God. Yes. Again, thank you for all the things and all the blessings you've bestowed upon us down to this time. And these things we praise you through Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Brother Tom. Each Sunday morning, we take of the uh, communion service which is time to remember what Jesus did for us on the cross and we take emblems uh, with the bread that's the represent his broken body and, and uh, through the vine to represent his shed blood on the cross for us we take a, take a reading this morning I'm going to read for from 1 Corinthians 11th chapter start with verse 23 for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until it comes. So we're going to have the verses of another song. 295. 295. And deacons, elders, helpers will serve for me. This On this Lord's day we assemble round the table of the Lord. Happy hearts are made to tremble when we hear his blessed word. Thanks to God for such a Savior, now enthroned in heaven above. Thanks for this exalted favor, bless me more of His love. We recall His broken body as we look upon this bread. Give ye thanks, divide and eat it. In my memory, he said, Thanks to God for such a Savior, now enthroned in heaven above. Thanks for 
for this exalted favor. Bless me, memorial of this love. And this crimson cup reminds us of that dressing long ago. When he died in pain and anguish, there his blood was made to flow. Thanks to God for such a Savior, now enthroned in heaven above. Thanks for this exalted favor, bless me, memorial of his love. There in agony he suffered on the cross for you and me. Now upon the throne he's ringing, blessed Lamb of Calvary. Thanks to God for such a Savior, now enthroned in heaven above. Thanks for this exalted favor, bless me, memorial of his love. Jesus, Heavenly Fathers, we pause in the service at this time to reflect in the Lord on that sacrifice made many, many years ago. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for yes. Jesus, our Savior, that he died and that his body is represented in this unleavened bread that we eat today that was broken on that cross. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, as we take this, we take it in the manner which is pleasing to thee. For these things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, If anyone was overlooked, please raise your hand and we'd be glad to serve you. Sunday morning, we're offered the opportunity to return a portion of what we've been blessed with back to the work of the church. Uh, take a reading, which we do normally. Uh, I'm going to read this morning from 2 Corinthians 9, chapter, starting with verse 6. <coughs> Remember this, whoever so, <coughs> excuse me again, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. 
Each man should give what he decides in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. So we'll have a uh, verse of another song and uh, last question. You know, Paul's going to lead this, this song. Uh, all of us that are in here that have a job, you should be working on someone to replace you. Because it's going to happen. It's going to happen. You live long enough. But I'm going to hang around a while. I'm not leaving tomorrow. But uh, the thrust of the gospel has two things. To spread the word and to care for people and love them. If we do those two things, you'd be surprised. Boy, what about Asbury College? Did the spirit get loose there? I wish it would happen in every college in America today. You'd see a difference in how we feel about each other <coughs> and how we treat each other, how we talk about each other. and <clears throat> Those are horrible things. Horrible. You wouldn't want someone saying something about you, so you shouldn't say it to them, about them. But anyway, we're doing the thrust of the church. We're trying to help them. We're going to have the... So... He said that we're just going to replace him. We can't replace him. We might step in his shoes. <laughs> Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. Working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power. Wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be whiter, much whiter than snow? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in its life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Serve us for Jesus, your King. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily as praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. Working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. We want to thank you for your generous offering. You can be sure it'll be used for the upbuilding of the church. I want to turn services over now to Brother Paul. <laughs> I'm trying to get 
trust you behind you. Oh, yeah. If I fall, you'll catch me. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> I thought so. It's glad to be able to stand before you once again. And to be able to proclaim God's word. Not mine, but the Lord's. Uh, open up your, song, your, your Bibles to Matthew chapter 10. And I want to turn over to chapter 9 just for a moment. And, you know, we've got work to do. We've got souls to save to spread God's gospel to the lost and dying world. There's a lot of sheep that are lost. That's kind of what this sermon's about. It's a, about a two-fold message. Kind of had me change this message in the middle of the week. Mm -hmm. People are like sheep. They need to be worked. We also, there needs to be workers. There needs to be laborers. Matthew 9, starting with verse 36, says, But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted, or they were distressed, and they were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Few laborers for the job. It's hard to find anybody today that wants to work. Or if they do give them a job, they're lazy. They don't want to do what you tell them to do. When you bid them and you give them a task, they don't know how to complete it. Or they don't care if they complete it or not. Now we as Christians, we need to be laborers and workers for God to bring in his sheep. Jesus had compassion on them, he said, because they fainted, they were worried, they were distressed on these people. They were scattered abroad. They weren't all together. We can look at the world around us today and we can see that we're not all together. We're scattered. He said they were like sheep and they had no shepherd to tell them where to go. People today are looking for something. They're searching for something. But where are they looking for and where are they searching at? Verse 37 and 38 is one of the great missionary passages of the New Testament times. And this should be where you and I are at. In verse 37 and 38. Jesus pictures the world as a great spiritual harvest. In need of laborers. This should be your and mine mission is to gather the sheep and to feed the sheep. We're to gather them into the storehouse. That's what Christ said that we needed to do. We should be trying to bring in souls into the harvest. And the harvest is coming whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not. That's right. Paul said, if in this life only I had hope, I would be of all men most miserable. If this is the only life that you had to look forward to, how miserable would that be? But there is another place. There is a 
harvest for the Christian people. There is a resting place for the Christian. And it is not just the duties of the ministers that stands in this pulpit and preaches the sermon every Sunday, but it is also the laborer's responsibility also to warn the lost to come to know the Lord. <clears throat> We're to bring them in to the harvest of the kingdom. And God has planned us to do. He has given us the work to do. We are his laborers. People today, they're scattered. They've lost their way. They don't know who or what to follow. You know, there's so many religions to follow today. What is it? Is it the last I heard? Is it like 4,000 religions? But there's only one true religion, and that's Jesus Christ and Him crucified. There's so many churches on every corner. Who's telling them the right way? Who is showing the sheep the right way? Who's giving them the right directions to go? Jeremiah chapter 50. So in verse 6 says, My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They don't care about them. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. The sheep has been scattered on the mountainsides and the shepherds don't care about them. But we need to be care enough to spread God's word. We need to care enough to bring those sheep into the sheepfold. Christ is the sheepfold. Mm -hmm. Verse 7 says, All that found them have devoured them, and their adversaries say, We offend not. Because they have sinned against the Lord, the habitations of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. We need to bring the sheep in. We need to spread God's gospel. We need to spread it and let the people of this world know that Jesus Christ died for them. Mm -hmm. He shed his life giving blood on the cross of Calvary for them. Psalms chapter 90, verse 1 says, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or even thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Jesus Christ is our dwelling place. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, he takes us to abode in us. We are in him and he is in us. Psalms 91 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High abideth under the shadow of the Almighty. We abide with Jesus Christ. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Mm -hmm. The sheep has been scattered. They're on the mountaintops, wandering. Where do I go? Who do I turn to? Who do I look to for advice? How can I get salvation? Mm -hmm. 
Verse 3 says, Surely, this is what Christ does for you. He said, Surely, he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowl and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Jesus Christ is our deliverer. He's the only way out. That's right. We know that there is only one way. When Jesus Christ said, I am the way, no man cometh to the Father except by me. We can't get there any other way except we go through Jesus Christ. He said, I am the good shepherd. I am the door to the sheepfold. Luke 5, 32 said, Jesus said, I came not to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. He said, the whole needeth not a physician, but the sick. He's talking about sin sickness, not your physical body. We're going to get a new body when we leave this world if we have Jesus Christ in our hearts. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a body like unto his. But in chapter 10 of Matthew, Jesus Christ has chosen his 12 disciples. And when he had called unto them, verse 1 says, his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. I'm not going to read 2 through 4 because we know who the disciples' names are. God had picked, already picked these men, but he's getting ready to send them out on a mission. And you and I have a mission today. That's right. It's whether we obey the mission that God has set forth for us to do. You can run from that mission, but you're not going to be happy if you do. I wasn't. The mission of the 12 disciples says, the 12 disciples, these twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The lost sheep. Look at the world around us, how people are running to and fro. They're lost and undone without God in their hearts. And we know that we are not the twelve disciples, and that we can't do or perform the things that the disciples did. We're not capable of. God doesn't, didn't give us that capability. But they were to go to the lost house of the sheep of Israel, they were confined to the cities of the Jews. He said in verse 7, As ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. I want to turn over to Matthew chapter 15 just for a minute. You notice he said for the disciples not to go to the Gentiles, but to stay in where the Jews are at, to the lost sheep of Israel. But in chapter 15, in verse 21, it says, Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievous, vexed with the devil. But he answered her, not a word. And his disciples came and brought him, saying, besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But 
But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Help me. How many times have we come to the Lord and said, help me? Help me. The disciples wasn't allowed to go to where this woman was. So she came to Christ. He said, but he answered and said, is not meat to take, it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Now the children that he's talking about here are the Jews. And the dogs that he's talking about here are the Gentiles. You and I. And he saith, truth, Lord, and she saith, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, Great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. The faith of the Canaanite woman. See, at this time, the Jews was, was without hope. They were lost until the middle wall petition was torn down when Christ died on the cross of Calvary for you and I. That veil was rent in two, and we were grafted in to be part of that era, of that kingdom. But the faith of this woman, she had so much faith in Christ, and because of the faith of her, her daughter was healed. And as you go, Jesus said, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You and I as Christians need to go out into the world every day, wherever we're at, and preach to the lost and dying world that the kingdom is at hand. <coughs> we're not to wait on someone else to do our job for us. We're to be laborers and workers for Christ. Not just to come here on Sunday morning and worship him in spirit and in truth that we're supposed to do, but we're supposed to go out into the world and spread his gospel to help bring in the lost sheep for them to escape a place that is called hell that was prepared for the devil and his angels. Amen. That place wasn't prepared for you. But if you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you don't repent of your sins and accept him into your life and being baptized for the mission of sin, that is exactly where you will end up. <coughs> there's no two, pla there's only two places. There's no middle petition. There is no straddling the fence when you leave this world. There's only two places that you can go, either heaven or hell. You don't change the way that your situation is in the grave when you're raised. <clears throat> Verse 8 says, this is the one th the mission that he was telling them to do. And this is what they had they could do. He said, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses, nor strip for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. Mm -hmm. right. A laborer, a worker is worthy of what he brings in. Is it right 
for one man to do all the work and they both get paid for the same thing? And verse 11 says, And to whatever city or town ye shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till ye go thence. And when you come into a house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in that day of judgment than for that city. These were the instructions that Jesus Christ had given to his disciples when he sent them out. Preach to the lost sheep. If they were accepted, then peace was upon them. Acts chapter 8. Eighteen and nineteen says, "Yeah, we got that right." It says that when Simon saw that there was there, that through laying on the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, "Give me also this power on that, that on whomsoever I lay my hands lay hands he may receive the Holy Ghost." But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Warnings. We can't buy our way in to heaven. No. The gift was freely given to us. You can accept it or you can return or you can denounce it. We're going to be persecuted for our Christianity. We're going to be talked about. We're going to be ridiculed. Jesus also told the disciples this. Warnings of persecutions. He didn't say it was going to be easy for us. A Christian life is a good life, but it's also a hard life to live. We're always on our guard. There's wolves out in the world. There's wolves that stands in the pulpit and wherever and preaches different gospels than other what the word of God says that misleads people. That they can live any way they want to live. They can do anything they want to do. They're all going to heaven. But there's only one way to heaven, and that is through the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Verse 16 says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. We're all sheep, whether we're a minister or not. We're still part of God's sheep. We're still part of his family, his fold. And there's vicious wolves out there that don't care about you. All they care about is their gain. All they care about is what they can put in their pocket. How much money you can give them on their, when they get through speaking. But our concern is for your soul. Our concern today is the value of your soul. What is the value of your soul? The value of your soul and mine was to cost so much that it cost the Lord God, his son, Jesus Christ, that hung on the cross of Calvary for our sins. That's right. That's what the cost of your soul is. Mm -hmm. It cost our Savior his life on the cross. Mm -hmm. So when you think about how much your soul is worth, Think on those things. 
He said, but beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the council, and they will scorn you in their synagogues. And you shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for testimony mm -hmm. against them and the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak. For it is not you that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death. These things are going on today. And the father of the child and the children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. Look to the way that our society is living today. It's hatred on every hand. Mm -hmm. Look at our prisons. They're full. They're to capacity because of sin, because of their hearts, how black and evil they are. You might not think that their people's hearts are evil. They are. There's still demons, and we talked about this in Sunday school this morning. There's still demons that are loose. Their hearts are black with hatred and envy and strife and sin and death. Verse 22 says, And you shall be hated of all men for my sake, name's sake. But he, but he that endureth to the end, same. the same mm -hmm. shall be saved. Mm -hmm. It's a hard road to travel. He said it's a straight and narrow road that we need to go. It's not the people, all the people that's traveling on this one road. But it's the people that's traveling the road that are few on that's going to make it that are endearing to the end. You don't have to go along with the crowd. They do everything that they do. Verse 23 says, But when they persecute you into this city, flee you to another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. Jesus Christ was talking about his second coming here. He's coming back to get his church. He's coming back to get his children, his sheep. His sheep that are wandering. Ephesians chapter 5. Sermon verse 14 says, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. We need to rise from the sleep that we're in. We need to tell the people that are lost and dying, they need to be awake. They need to be awakened by the Lord. Fifteen says, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but is wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. People think that they don't like to talk about the way the people live in today. That the days are evil. Mm -hmm. And they're getting eviler every day. You can look at your news or whatever you look at. But it's getting worse every day. Verse 17 says, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what of the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. We need the Spirit of God in our heart leading and guiding and, and directing our paths to righteousness. Teaching our children, our grandchildren, about the Lord Jesus Christ and the ways that they need to live when they get older and the way that they need to treat people and to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Amen. Yes. Our children are being misled. There is no guidance. We need to be awake 
and not sleeping. We need to let our light shine. As Jesus Christ said, I'm the light of the world. Mm -hmm. When Jesus Christ comes into your heart, mm -hmm. we take up that light. Mm -hmm. We begin to walk like he walks. We, need to, we begin to talk like him. We need to, to begin to think like him. And then we need to be doing these things without murmuring, without complaining, but always putting God first and foremost in our lives, seeking his ways, being instructed by the Holy Spirit and his word that leads us and guides us, and by studying his word and knowing what his word tells us to do, teaching us right from wrong. In Acts chapter 5, verse 38. No matter what befalls us, no matter what comes our way, we need to be steadfast for the Lord Always doing what he tells us to do. And even I don't do that because I get in trouble when I don't. And Acts 38, or 5, 38 says, And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. This is Gamaliel's advice to these people. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. Let's don't fight against God, but let us, God, guide and direct our path. Let his Holy Spirit lead us and direct us in everything that we go and do. The Apostle Paul Tell us a little bit about what he did to try to, to discourage the church from growing before he was converted and accepted Jesus Christ into his heart. In Acts chapter 22, starting with verse 17, it says, And it came to pass that when I was come Again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance. And saw many saying to me, Make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning thee. Paul at this time had given his life to the Lord. And he said, They knew that I imprisoned and beat in every synagogue them that believed on thee. Paul was scattering the sheep before he became a Christian. He had had orders from the high priest to persecute the Christians. He said, and when, thy, and when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by and consenting unto his death and kept the raiment of them that slew him. And he said unto me, depart and I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. After that Jesus Christ was died and suffered on the cross, when the veil was ripped in two, the Gentiles was inherited into the kingdom. Now we have an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We have an opportunity to ask him to come into our hearts and our lives and to live for him and to do the things that he bids us to be a laborer for him, a workman, to help bring in the lost sheep. We're hated today because of the name of Jesus Christ, what it stands for. It stands for truth. 
justice, freedom, salvation, holiness, and faith. All of these things represents Jesus Christ. He loved you and I so much that he gave his life freely on the cross of Calvary for us. The blood that was shed on the cross was for you and I. You can accept it today or you can reject it. You are a free moral person. But there's a consequence how you accept it or if you don't accept it. There's a consequence, especially if you do not accept what Jesus Christ has offered you. You can have eternal life with him in heaven, or you can have eternal separation from the love of God in hell without him in your life. Today as we stand and sing, number 613, I pray that this message has helped you come to know a little bit more about Christ and to help us as workers and laborers for him to help bring in the lost sheep people that are wandering to and fro on the mountainsides, on the hillsides, lost and undone without Jesus Christ in their hearts. Today, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, you have this opportunity to accept him as we stand and sing. If you've been to Jesus for the cleansing power, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you only trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood in the soul cleansing blood? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood in the soul? Cleansing blood. Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white? Pure and white in the blood of the Lamb. Will your soul be ready for the mansions bright? And be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul, cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin, and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood? before we dismiss. Remember at 3 o'clock uh, at the Wellness Center, those that want to go 
bowling for the, the youth group. You're most definitely invited, and we'll have a meal there at three, and bowling at four. That'll be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday at seven. Tonight at seven. Tonight at seven and Wednesday at seven. Brother William, you're dismiss us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another blessed day to be together here at this church. <clears throat> Praise your holy name. We thank you for your many blessings that you give us, each and every one of us. We would ask that you be with us as we part and leave this place. Stretch your heart and mind and your word and your wisdom that we can live our lives in a manner that's pleasing to you and true to your word. Heavenly Father, may your grace and presence be with us always. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Here, Dina. You might only come up here. I'm having trouble standing. I like to fail right there. What do you think's happening, Jimbo?